Hello everyone and welcome to the Art of Teaching Art. Today I'm going to show you how to design a painting with the theme of sea creatures. So when we're thinking about designing this kind of painting, this is an example, we want to think about the creatures that the painting will feature as well as the other details we will add. Now this painting has also been inspired by the artist Paul Clay who features lots of patterns and colours in his work. So here I've placed a fish and a turtle and then I've added pattern in the background and used warm colours for the fish and cold colours for the background. The same with this example here, but this is done in colouring pencil. You've got the fish with patterns in warm colours and a background in cool colours. I've thought carefully about where I've placed the fish. So before we can start with this, we need to think about the word composition. Now composition means the arrangement of elements within a piece of artwork. So we're not only thinking about where the sea creatures are placed, also where the pattern is placed, what elements of pattern we have, how large that scale is, and also where everything kind of goes on the page. Now we're aiming to do an A4 painting. So we need to think carefully about what we are going to add. The more elements you add, the more tricky the painting is going to be. The first step is to do a painting design. This is a design I've come up with. It features a fish larger coming in from one side and then two fish swimming towards it. So I've gone for quite a realistic look with this painting in terms of the fish swimming. You may want to try and create a little bit of a story within your painting. You may want to think about changing the scale of the fish or the sea creatures, but all of those decisions are up to you. So I've got all of these little uh, fish. I'm just going to show you some different compositions that might work, and then you can go ahead and design your own painting exploring the composition that you want. So I've got a plain piece of paper here, so this can represent my painting surface and I've got a collection of different sea creatures. Now it's totally up to you which sea creatures you choose. I've just picked a variety for the purpose of this. Now we're thinking of composition. We need to think carefully about where we place things. And that means that what we don't want to do is just arrange things in a haphazard way without even thinking about it. If I decided to do a composition like this, it's very random. I haven't thought about the placement of things. Some things wouldn't be placed in this way. Some things are overlapping. And actually the whole painting just looks a little bit too busy rather than us kind of being drawn to the key pieces that you want. Now, I could think about positioning things slightly more carefully. So potentially having the crab at the bottom, things swimming on and floating around. But straight away what we're seeing here is that this piece of paper is way too large for the small images. And it means they are getting quite lost. When you compare it to my design here, the fish are a lot more in focus than the background. Whereas on this, you've got a massive background. So this is an A5 piece of paper. I think this is gonna work much better for the scale of my items. So I might want to place one fish or sea creature in the center of the painting. This is the easiest kind of composition. So you're thinking you can still see the background, but the emphasis is on this main creature. You could do that, of course, with any other creature as well. So this is the simplest way to do this. You could make it a little bit more elaborate, placing a second creature or fish in the painting. Again, we've got a little bit of a story created here with this fish swimming this way and this fish swimming this way. You could, of course, not just place the whole of the fish on the painting, but actually add a fish coming in from the side. Again, that creates a little bit more interest because you're not just drawing the whole of a fish every time. If you wanted to, you could explore just having multiple fish coming into the painting. But if we notice with this, the middle area looks quite empty. So it's thinking about what you could do. Could this one actually be swimming across straight away? That area becomes fuller. We could also think about moving the direction of the fish. So does it, can they be swimming towards each other potentially? Or could one change and be swimming a different direction? What we want to avoid is placing fish the wrong way round in the composition. 
you might think, oh, I might just want fish all swimming in one direction. So we've got a triangular shape coming in from the side in this way. If you want to avoid using fish, you can obviously use other sea creatures. So you might try to place something within each third of the painting. So I could have my seahorse in the this third here. We could place a crab down at the bottom here. And then we're thinking about adding something in this area here. Potentially a turtle swimming across. So straight away we've got something placed in this section, this section and this section. I feel like that, that this composition is missing something slightly. I wonder if it's just the scale of the turtle coming in. I feel like it should come in and fill this section here. So when you're thinking about designing your painting, think about the images that you want to use. Think about where you place those images across the page and what's going to be easiest for you. Obviously, if you draw lots of things really small, it's going to be tricky to add patterns and add detail to your work as well. You also want to think about the placement of your pattern. So once you've got your fish in or your sea creatures in, you then want to think about your pattern. So think about larger scale patterns on the fish and think about the direction of the pattern on the painting as well. So with this one, I went for a swirling design and this was inspired by this piece of Paul Clay's work, the swirling stripes. On this design here, we've got circular shapes coming across the painting and that was inspired more by this piece where I've got kind of wavy lines coming across. In this painting, I was inspired by many of these pieces, such as the coloured blocks and squares and overlapping shapes. So what you need to do is think about the sea creatures you're going to use, think about the patterns that you want to add, and actually think of a story that you're creating behind your work. Thank you so much for watching and have a really great day.